Pride Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, and gender nonconformists. It's Jeff, and I wanted to remind you that we are off this week. I'm in the Twin Cities area celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary, but have no fear, I didn't forget about you. I present to you a COL flashback to November 3rd, 2013, with a remastered version of COL 235. Does your work have the gays? We will see you back next week on the same YouTube channel and podcast feeds. Now time to hear Damon, Gary, and me talk about chocolate, Zagnuts, and Thanksgiving dinner as COL 235 Flashback starts now. Sunday, November 3rd, 2013. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. Everybody dance now. And that would make me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast event, Determined Lake, episode number 235. And uh, just so you guys know, um, uh, Robert and Eric are, are not dead. <laughs> um, right now, Robert was actually kidnapped uh, to go hiking on the Appalachian Trail. Nice. And when I actually wrote it into our show notes here, I said the Application Trail. <laughs> <laughs> and you but, can't um, blame autocorrect for that. Could nope. be the same thing. That was that was that was my problem. But in any case, he was on the Appalachian Trail. Um, so he. So somebody bought him a plane ticket or something. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Eric is on assignment. He's searching for what makes the best uh, hookup app. Uh, nice. And apparently during this research, he had to replace his phone. Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'm just saying. Hey, you know. He dropped if, it if, in some Crisco. <laughs> Again? <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're making new nanotechnology to prevent those type of accidents. Mm-hmm. So you could get any, you know, uh, liquidy kind of stuff on your phone and it would just slide right off. You wouldn't have to worry about this. Well-looped phone. Um, uh, by the way, Gary, I'm very impressed with you, by, and that would make me Gary. In the <laughs> well, regular ending line. Anyway. <laughs> well, what makes me laugh about it is I already knew as we were doing the intros that our other two hosts were off on assignment. So that's what was popped in my head. of like, <laughs> I'm the only one left. <laughs> our listening audience doesn't know that before I said it. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was funny that you actually said it, though. Anyways, moving on. Uh, I'm putting this in the show notes, but uh, so uh, I'm not sure if you guys knew, but uh, in a completely different type of circle of uh, uh, group I'm in, I actually had my voice was featured uh, was a one of the many voices in the Lockheed Journal's uh, episode number five. Oh, uh, I, I I was the voice Ooh. of a judge. I will be reprising that role in the next uh, season two, episode one of the Lockheed Journal's. So um, uh, you can find that at the Storm Ride cast. Um, uh, maybe I'll find a link and put it in there. You're going to spell this wrong. It's completely wrong. Is you have to wrong? spell that wrong. Yeah, it's it's ah. actually Lockhead. Ah. Uh, that? Journals. Cool. Uh, there we go. So, and I just recorded oh. my line. I just recorded my lines for this um Late uh, for the latest episode just last night and awesome. turned out pretty good. Um, and uh, I'm reprising my role as judge, so very cool. So I, I had to have an authoritative voice. <laughs> you will get on your knees and suck my cock. No, I didn't say that for this. So <laughs> that's that's just what he says. Anyways, so I thought I'd, I thought I'd throw in a little, little bit, 
about something I did this week, considering um, I didn't really do anything. And it was probably one of the most boring day, uh, weeks at work because uh, we stopped making some outbound calls. Uh, and uh, the entire Thursday, I got no in, no bleeds, nothing to call out on. So, oh, wow. I, I literally was there just browsing the web and playing solitaire on my phone nice. all day. Nice thing is, I got paid for it. I was just going to say, <laughs> at least you got paid for it, because I don't know how many times people have said to me, I wish I had a job where I didn't get paid to do nothing. Okay, yeah. well, if you've that experience, get, you might rethink the, <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, well, I, I figured that it, one of the reasons why I wanted, uh, why, if I won a million dollars, I'd still want to do, have a job. And the reason would be was because I'd probably be bored the rest of the day with nothing to do. So, because uh, I don't like going out at all. So, going to work gives me something to do during the week. So, I'm not bored all week. Well, now I go to work, I'm bored and wish I was back home because there's probably something more interesting to do. <laughs> or someone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, I, I got it. I got on tangent. Uh, Damon, so, so right. you 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 were out. Yes, I was away. Um, I was actually in Portland. I forget what you guys said, but yeah. <laughs> um. I went to Portland to visit uh, my friend Nathan and his um, boyfriend Glenn, um, and it was also my birthday week, so I, you know, went and had a really great time. Um, uh, Portland was awesome. Uh, I will not give all the details, but Portland was awesome. Portland was fun. Um, really great to see the West Coast and everything. So I had an awesome time doing that. Uh, met a lot of people. Blah blah blah. So fun, fun, fun. Um, flew back. Sunday, and um, that's right. Sorry, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, on on Sunday, I flew back um, Portland to Denver, um, and then I literally had to f run across to get to my um, plane from Denver to Chicago. Um, got there just in time as they were boarding the plane. Um, had to check my carry-on bag because there was no more room because the plane was full. Flew Denver to Chicago and then Chicago to Indianapolis. Got to Indianapolis, got my check bag, but did not get my carry-on bag. Why? Oh, they wrote Minneapolis as opposed to Indianapolis, but they wrote the right flight number. So there was a 50-50 chance it would have gotten to me. I didn't see it. I wasn't looking at it, you know, when they gave me the little slip to, you know, verify it. So, um, yeah, so it, it went to Minneapolis. Um, so don't have to check my carry-on anymore, which kind of sucks. Anyway, um, get picked up by Jim. And he's calling me kind of frantic. And I'm like, OK, what's going on? And turns out his car was overheating. And he was like, I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, let's try to find a place So we found. We went um, we went to a gas station. He got some oil in the car. It was kind of working, but kind of not. Um, uh, so we called AAA, took them an hour and a half to get to us apparently we were in between shifts changed or whatever um the guy came and it was i mean they were looking at it and they talked about it for a while he wasn't sure why it wasn't working um but he thought it would be okay to drive but he wasn't 100 sure because he wasn't 100 sure and jim is gets super stressed about um the car he chose to we're going to we're going to stay tonight and take the car to a body shop and look at it and all that stuff. Well, he did that. And it's a good thing because the car needed a new radiator and a new thermostat. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. So um, if we had gotten on the road, we could have probably been 
stranded somewhere in the middle between Indianapolis and Cincinnati, which, if you know the area, is a lot of nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a whole lot of nothing in that stretch of, of area. So, um, uh, so good thing. And then on top of it, um, they got my luggage to Indianapolis and they called me and let me know. And I told them, oh, well, I'm going to be here because um, we they were going to plan on taking it to Cincinnati and all that stuff. But I didn't know if I would be there. <laughs> so um, I ended up getting my my um, lost carry on at the um, audio body shop in Indianapolis. And the guy was like, I'm, I'm still going to get paid for going down to Cincinnati. I was like, oh. Cool, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, we finally got out of Indianapolis at 3 o'clock, that 3 or 3.30 that e- that afternoon, Monday afternoon. I got home about 5.30. So, yeah. It was a strange, strange trip back. Yes, indeed. But the car is working okay now, although he's probably not going to be driving it long distance for a while. Well, that's understandable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It was a good time. It was it was a good trip, and, and it was... It ended unpleasantly, but not too unpleasant. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> uh. So, uh, I am back in Texas. Woohoo! Um, I had to come back down before I, my two weeks previous for work, I already had known and it was booked for corporate travel for me to come back down for a week. So I flew down on Tuesday and I fly back, uh, it was coming Tuesday and I get down here. Uh, the flights were actually pretty decent. I only had two this time and, uh, they were both freezing cold. Really? Um, Oh, yeah. Like it was like, well, and part of the thing is, is that especially the long flight from San Antonio, it's like they had air conditioning vents on the floor. So oh, my wow. feet were just absolutely freezing. Wow. Um, and I wore a long sleeve tee and a sweatshirt because it's cold back home. And I knew like sometimes I'm cold on a flight and then I had to ask for a blanket. Oh, wow. <laughs> for, for the long flight. Um, to, to use and so anyways so I finally land in Texas it's beautiful it's warm I go get the rent, you know baggage rental car I get uh, to the hotel check in early luckily they had a room uh, so I get a room I unpack everything and then I leave and I go to work and uh, the location to the hotel and work is walking distance it's like literally right next door ah Nice. so I so but I do have a rental car just so I can get around you know go places and so I you know go over to work and I come in and security doesn't know I'm arriving. So they have no record of me needing a badge, which oh. kind of happened the first time I was here. So now I'm like extra perturbed because I'm like, this is my second trip. So they give me a temp badge and they're going to make one for me or something. And so then I go and I walk around and I go to the main brand and call it and People recognize me, you know, that uh, I just done the training class with, so I say hello to them. But I don't see any, like, support staff, the management. Like, hmm. And it was kind of lunchtime, so they all could have been going to lunch. Mm. So then I turn around and I go up to the, cl- the training class, which I'm supposed to be assisting with. And so I walk in and the trainer's like, oh, hi. And I could tell by his tone of voice that it's um, kind of a surprise to see me. And now, mind you, I wasn't supposed to start until Wednesday, but Tuesday I wanted to make sure that I had the security badge issue squared up and just, you know, check on the lay of the land. And then I was going to come back and I was going to lay down and take a nap because I'd only slept like an hour the previous night Um, Mm. because I had just gotten back from Cincinnati before having to fly out of Erie at like five in the morning. Wow. So I had spent the the previous weekend uh, with uh, mutual friends of ours, Damon, over at Robin Terry's for a part of the weekend. And then I spent uh, Sunday over at Jeff's and then turned around and left from Cincinnati on Monday, drove all the way straight home to get home until after midnight. And then, you know, you have to pack and do laundry and all that. So needless to say, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go, you know, check things out. Then I'm going to go back to the hotel room and I'm going to you know, take a nap. Yeah, that never happened. I stayed at work all the way until about six or seven that evening. Um, 
and learned magically that nobody knew I was coming. Oh, shit. Nice. And I was like, well, how's that possible? So I ended up calling my team. Oh, and here's the kicker. The whole reason I came down was because I was supposed to train class on Monday to make up for lost time because they were cutting some of the training class short due to another class. Uh, yeah, they reworked the schedule, so that wasn't happening. The class was going to be normal. Uh. So we don't have class on Monday, which means I'm not needed to teach the class on Monday. Oh. Which means you are technically not needed down here. <laughs> so needless to say, I was pretty unhappy on Tuesday afternoon because I had just landed, been here for like two hours, and then found out there wasn't really a technical purpose for me. And so then my team, without our director, my team was like making kind of jokes about, well, you better make sure that you get dinner. You might have to repack and go straight back to the airport and get an early return flight. I'm like, oh, man. But when I talked to the director, he's like, well, I didn't know that uh, that they changed the class thing. And he's like, well, it doesn't matter. There's plenty for you to do down there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're paying for it. You might as well stay there. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm still here. Um it's been interesting. Uh, and last night I went out. A uh, gentleman that I had chatted with the last time I was here, um, he had given me his cell number. And he said, text me when you're back in town. So I did. And I texted him. And I, and I was polite in the text. I said, hey, this is Gary. And I gave him, you know, Gary Bear 73 on Bear 411. Uh, you know, in the text. And only I called it B411 because I didn't know if it was his real text, if his real cell number. He could have given me somebody else's or whatever. <laughs> nice. Well, and I didn't, you know, want to alert a stranger, you know, who gets this odd message. So anyways, he, um, so then he looked at my profile because he didn't quite remember giving me his number, which is kind of comical. And I'm like, well, what did you give it up for? But anyways, uh, so anyways, he turned around and he looked at my profile and then he remembered like the chat conversation history and all that kind of stuff. So then he reached out to me and he's like, hey, you want to get together and have drinks? I'm like, sure. So I went out last night in San Antonio and uh, went to uh, three different clubs, all kind of like along a strip. Um, got to see, you know, some of the San Antonio scene, quote unquote, for this area. Um, met a whole bunch of people through this guy because he's like used to live here for a long time, then moved away for a number of years. Now he's back, and he apparently is well acquainted with a bunch of people. So it was nice to uh, to get to see to see folks and that I don't even know and um, <laughs> how they handle things and stuff like that. So it uh, it was it was pretty interesting to say the least. So yeah, I'm back and um, I. I don't know if this has happened for anybody else. The more you go to a place, I think you acclimate, like, not like it's your second home, but you just you just know the lay of the land so well that you kind of don't really have to think about certain things. Like for me, going into downtown, it's like I know how to get there on the highway. You just you know those kind of. And I caught that this trip. I was like, wow, it's only my second time in San Antonio, and I'm already getting a feel for for some of this stuff. Mm. So it's uh, it's been pretty interesting to say the least. Nice, mm. yeah. So moving on. Um... <laughs> uh, cranberry vodka. Uh oh. Sniff. It smells like cranberries. Doesn't really have much of a taste of cranberries, so. Huh. Okay. Uh, but um, it is actually is not too bad uh, with some Diet Coke. Huh. Okay. Good. I also have a, a melon vodka as well, which I'm still trying to decide whether it's representing watermelon or muskmelon. Huh. And the bottle is green. But, huh. Yeah. Well, there's a watermelon. There's Midori, which tastes a lot like watermelon. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. What? <laughs> Midori tastes like um, honeydew, I think. 
And the reason why I'm saying it so like the way I am is because I hate it. I think it's, <laughs> it makes me gag. It's terrible. No, this is vodka. So the Midori is a uh, liqueur, I believe. Right. Uh, so this is, these are really two very different types of uh, liquors. Oh, but uh, anyways, um, and, and we'll move on from there. So that's my, my, yeah, I do that. So um, you're you're just mixing shit with Coke, is what I hear. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have both uh, uh, diet diet Coke with the uh, the Splenda and some uh, cherry Coke. I also have Barkshire beer, and I had some Sprite, but it ran out last night. Oh. I right. think you're on the quest for the next great co- concoction. No one knows anything about. Yes, I do have a great cock. Finally put that into the uh, cycle. Yay! Yay. Unfortunately, we don't have much feedback here. Uh, All we really have is uh, one like on Facebook from John Brock. 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 Something like that. Uh, We thank you for your like. Thank you, sir. And I don't know if we're just kind of running to this, that point of uh, people have liked us and everything. But, hey, you liked us. Talk to us. Hey. Discuss us. Um, uh, th- we did get a little bit of feedback on the um, uh, poll, which we'll get to later. But let's go right into uh, this week's talk. Let's talk about, you know what? We all work. <laughs> we're all gay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have... A workplace. So we are gays in the workplace. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> to get a topic title. <laughs> I thought you were about to say we're all gay and we work it. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> work. Turn to the left. Work. Turn to the right. <laughs> so yeah. Well, gays in the workplace. Gary, why don't you lead the conversation? I would. I would your, your story was your story was very interesting. Okay, so <laughs> this is this is actually my. Did I do that? Um, <laughs> it starts off with a Did I do that? So I was here a couple of weeks ago, uh, and prior to coming and coming to work, I had been you know using my phone and I was on different apps, and then I you know had locked the phone, and so I went to work. And I'm standing uh, next to the trainer that I'm working with, and I needed to use my phone to call one of my team members back home. So I, you know, get my earbuds out and I plug it into my phone and turn around and I open up, you know, unlock the phone, and the first thing that's on the screen is scruff. Oh. Uh, and I was like, and, you know, I didn't panic. You know, I didn't have like a yeep, you know, and like, you know, have this overreaction. I just quickly hit the home screen, you know, so it fades away and you know, dial the number or whatever. Well, the trainer was standing next to me and I wasn't sure if he saw it or not. And he did because later that day, I think when I went to go get lunch, I got a message from him on Scruff. <laughs> and I had known, I had figured out by this point that he was probably family, quote unquote, or friends of Dorothy, whatever you want to call. And I... Was it that I was surprised, but I wasn't quite that surprised. In fact, the photo is difficult to tell because it's of him and his partner, and it's not um, a photo that I can tell really clearly, easily who who is. But I made a presumption. I was looking at it, and the profile name is not his name, or I found out his partner's name for that matter either. It's kind of a nickname, and I was like, "Um, that kind of looks like him, but I don't know if it's him. So I was just like, hello, you know, like little things like that. So. But, you know, then he ended up opening up about, uh, he mentioned like about his partner and some different stuff I noticed during training. He makes references to being um, diplomatic or politically correct when he talks about things involving your significant other, your spouse, your life wow. partner, when you're married. You know, I mean, like he's, he's, he's kind of, he's not making it a direct point, but he's saying it to be inclusive. I started thinking about it and I work in telecommunications and I know that this, that, you know, telecommunications is one of the industries where we have the gay, uh, as part of the workforce. And it got me thinking about how do you find out who your other people are that you work with? And Uh 
I mean, is like a secret handshake or are people like just very open? Is it a no brainer? Is it not even discussed? Because when I, and, and these, all these things come from my case history, you know, when I came out in 92 and then at that time, you know, I was in college. So being out in college wasn't that big of a deal. But then when you, when I left college with my degree and started working professionally, I kind of clamped down any of that kind of aspect of my life because to me it wasn't important for my professional life but as times have changed and my company that I'm with now is now more inclusive and they include orientation as part of our like non-discrimination issues um, as of now they're going to be including uh, legally married spouses regardless of gender for benefits. Hmm. So, it, I mean, I think that changes the landscape of things. But I remember, like, when I first came to my company, yeah, it was kind of known, but people weren't necessarily, you know, out per se. And then we had some transgender individuals who worked for us, which I was actually involved in one of the situations because the person approached me, kind of figured out that I am a homosexual <laughs> and had asked me, how do I use a bathroom? Like, which is the right one to use. So, and mind you, this is like 2001. So this was really progressive at that time for my company to learn what to do. And so I, you know, they, they were like, well, immediately most of management was like, well, they should just, you know, they should go into the restroom of the gender that they were born with. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not the point. <laughs> and I was kind of frustrated because we have a unisex at that time at the location, we had a unisex restroom in HR. And so my answer was really simple. It's like, let them use that restroom because it's non-gender specific. And then everybody's like, well, that's not fair because then they have a special restroom of use and everybody else doesn't get to use it for, the, for most of the rest of the company in that building. And I was like, that's not the point. It's not about making <laughs> what makes most practical sense. You know, so that way the individuals aren't bothered by the fact that there's a person who, you know, looks – Perhaps one gender, but is not representative of, of whatever. You know, I was just to me, I was so frustrated by it. I was like, this is just silly. But the point of the the topic is, is like, what about you guys? Like, how do you find out? I mean, is it is it is it equal out and open? Do you have like a coalition awareness, you know, committee or like some companies? You know, they're very supportive of Pride, and you know, they donate money and make floats, and and others, you know, the. They would never even dream of that, such a thing. Huh. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Am I giving you a lot to think about, David? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something you don't realize. I mean, it depends on where you are in the infrastructure. Yeah. Like me being the probably the only one here who doesn't have any sort of degree in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'm the lowest rung. <laughs> I'm the peon that's in, that's <laughs> on the, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I sometimes get up in the level. I was a point of sale supervisor when I was in, we're getting Shopco and I was like, what, 20 yeah, uh, or even 18. So, but that's a Shopco. That's, that's a yeah. target ish type thing, you know? Um, so, but it's still going from cashier instead of just going to suit service as then POS supervisor I went from cashier to POS supervisor and I was you know supervising the front end so that was great and whenever I get to a job I try to get up to the next level so I'm like a CSR2 right now actually no longer because I switched departments but but I'm I'm the one that's answering the phone and everything so how gays how I've Honestly, from my experience when it comes to finding other gays in the workplace, one, I don't hide it, but I don't – like it never comes up as a topic unless, you know, something rolls around, around like I'm dating somebody or something like that. I don't just like say, by the way, everybody, I'm gay. I'm just like if it ends up coming up, it comes up and everything. Um, and to just – and that's in the way I find out about the other gays. And we had like a, well, one of them was just a queenie son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, a nice guy and everything and everything. But uh, um, 
I'm not sure if he had any sort of relation to the bear community, but he was quite bearish. Hmm. Um, uh, but uh, he was very queeny. Um, uh, although that doesn't mean anything when it comes to the bear yeah. community. <laughs> but um, so there was there was him. There was another guy. I can't remember. And then there were these uh, two lesbians who, who I just kind of eventually found out about. You know, and it kind of came out from the fact that I already everybody knew by that time about me. Ah. And and again, it wasn't one of those things where it's like. Like loud and clear, it just kind of ended up coming out, and like, I just they ask, I say yes, and yeah, you know, and I'm like, does it matter? And nobody else in my place work really cared or anything, and I didn't flaunt it, push anything or anything, and and there was a few people who I got to know enough that I could, whenever I had some of the more sexual jokes. I would, you know, I would say them, but I would say it kind of like in the it's only you and me hearing this and maybe the person next to it. I don't do very often or anything. And it's just, you know, being very relatively HR friendly, but still having the, that fun time with the people. And I could even joke with like, oh, there's this guy at my work called Carlos. Um, and he's a big guy. And, you know, me, I like the big guys. <laughs> Needless to say, he was the butt of a couple of my jokes. Nice. And, and but the thing was, he was okay with it. And and most of the time, some of the jokes were just he says something, and I just look at him and smile. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> and basically, he made the joke. I just enforced it. So uh, and and of course, and he knew it, it was to me that just everything was just a joke. It's not like I'm trying to hit on him. Although I will say that uh, if Carlos did need a blowjob and, and <laughs> anything, I would totally go for it. Even though you know I'm not so much at uh, giving blowjobs, but you know I'm a nice guy as long as I can touch that belly. Anyways. <laughs> So what you're saying is, if he needed some assistance, you would be more than happy to volunteer. Absolutely. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> and, and I think there was, there was a few other gave you. There, there was this big old black dude <laughs> who you, you knew he was family. From, I mean, he was, he was, he was a, an absolute queen. Uh, just the, the 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 hand out walk, you know, where you kind of have your hand down and the the palm out. And anyways, he was just kind of that. Needless to say, I would still uh, uh, think that he, I, I would like to bend him over my bed, but that's another matter <laughs> altogether. So I've got a lot of people, a lot of things, and and there's a lot of people. But it's really more of when it comes to work, it's like it's interesting, so you know who they are. But yeah. it's a non-issue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I kind of feel that way. Um, Although there were these twins that were working on my floor, uh, which I didn't know whether they were or not. And I was just kind of hoping they would notice my stares and glances. <laughs> uh, and then, then have the two come up to me and say, hey, are you gay? Yes. Did you want to come to our bed? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that never Wait. happened. Oh, OK. Sorry. I missed the part where it was a fantasy. I was like, what happened? No, it was fantasy. Uh, I, when? Yeah, if if I had, had begged those twins, you guys would know about it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. In this case, it's more... Well, and, and of course, uh, the 31st was their last, their last day. Oh. <laughs> so my eye candy is gone. Oh. And since they transferred department... Well, and uh, since uh, I transfer departments, there's really no, and since most everybody's gone by now, there's not really any eye candy left. Oh, so no more eye candy. Yeah, yeah. I I've had the um, it's funny. I kind of had the okay when I moved to Cincinnati. Uh, my choice was to Cincinnati would be the city where I basically didn't care. You know, when I was, you know, I, I grew up in Louisville, 
that's family. I don't really, you know, I'm kind of out, but not really out, you know, there. Went to Berea, went to college, opened up a little bit more. It was, you know, yeah, you know, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you kind of thing, you know, but it's college, so whatever, you know. Um, when I moved here, I made the conscious effort to, I'm going to, I'm not going to broadcast it. You know, I'm not like Jeff said, I'm not going to walk up to someone. Hi, I'm gay. How are you? You know, it's, it's not going to be like the first thing I say, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to hide it. You know, I'm not going to, if someone asked me directly, I'm not going to lie. So, um, I started at a theater company here and, you know, it's theater, which surprisingly was very heterosexual. <laughs> um, mm. and then, um, yeah. And then I moved to, when I went to Macy's, um, I started in a clerical position, but I didn't, you know, I've never made a real, it was, it was, it was, oh, I was okay with it. And if someone asked, I would tell them, you know, and, and as I slowly started coming out, I started mentioning, you know, I'm in the men's chorus now and, um, and it would be more of a matter of with coworkers, it would be if someone actually asked me or if there was a question or someone goes, well, what are you doing this weekend? And, oh, I have a men's course concert. And, you know, um, those are the kind of things that happened. I started, it started with my boss, um, Sandy, um, it started with her, you know, just asking a, I forget even what she asked. It was a random general question. Um, and it just ended up having to be me talking about, the chorus, and then the fact I'm a member of the men's chorus, and you know it's a gay well, men's chorus. So well, well, what was that called again? <laughs> the men's chorus, no. Cincinnati men's chorus. <laughs> I just had a shot of had them a early. long time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but no, you know, so um, you know, and from there, I just you know, I you know, I've been dating Jim for ten years now, and all that stuff, and it just you know things that kind of slowly happen. Um, I have a uh, uh, I have a lesbian coworker, um, Erica, who I'm really good friends with, and um, you know it's 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 fine. You know our our company, you know Macy's, Seeds, is is very you know pro you know gay whatever. It has the whole you know non discrimination clause, and um, there's partner benefits, domestic partner benefits, and all that stuff. It's all you know there. So great company to work for. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but you know it's just in regards to I, I believe there is a gay um, organization um, or a gay lesbian alliance or whatever you want to call it um, I'm not a member um, not that I've I honestly I know it, I know it exists <laughs> I know it's there I just don't know who runs it um, how they get information, where they meet, how often they meet, you know, anything. I don't, I don't know. So um, I know a couple few years ago, I they sent out an email because it was Pride and Macy's was um, sponsoring the um, Cincinnati Pride Parade. I mean, they've done it a few years since then, but um, and it was like, oh, we want people to march in the parade and and and. Um, um, we're going to have a booth at the at the festival and we want people to be at the table and all this stuff. And they kind of sent out a blast email to people. And I was like, sure, that sounds like a good idea. So I did. Um, I since I sang in a men's chorus, I couldn't do it until the Sunday evening or something like that. And and, and yeah, well, that was so, fun. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, no, I've 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 never actually I, I've I know there's a group. I know there's an organization um, at my work, and but at the same time, I think I feel that it's it's um, you know it's not as as big a deal now. Now, if you were a a higher level executive and and there was a level of clout and whatnot to your position, it might be a little bit more difficult to to come out and be open and out out there. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that there's potential, you know, that you would or would not necessarily say something depending on who you're dealing with. And maybe if it's a client, you know, and you kind of know that your client has expressed, you know, uh, viewpoints that might not mode mix well. Um, yeah. You might want to refrain from things. But I, I don't know if more than ever now, I think people are just kind of accepting whatever it is. 
I think yeah. it's a, I think the main idea is like, oh, you're gay. What is that? How is that effect going to affect our business? Oh, it's not. In some sense, ignore it. Yeah. I mean, like you're gay. So what? Move on. Yeah. Let's uh, actually talk about something that's actually going to affect the business. Yeah. And, and they're just like, look, you're just another person. So what if you go home and fuck a guy? I don't care. <laughs> you know. And that's really the attitude that I think that most people should be taking, is what you do at home, what your relationships are. That's your relationships. They're, exactly. It's, because honestly, it's not going to affect me. And this is like one of the things like, well, what about the sanctity of marriage? Well, how is two loving gay men getting married going to affect your marriage? You just divorced your wife. <laughs> yeah, it's just it. I know. I mean, nowadays, you know, it's just something that happens. You know, it, it's not, you know, like you said, it's not important. It's not a contributing factor to how you do your job and what you do, you know, you know, if you're a good worker and you get your job done, or if you're, even if you're a crappy worker and, and you suck, you know, <laughs> the fact that you're, you're gay should not matter because it all should matter. All the th only thing that really should matter is that you get the job done. And if you don't get the job done, you know, you get fired. <laughs> well, what really matters is how well you get the job done. Yeah. I mean, there's getting the job done. That's fine. Yeah. That's OK. But if he, if the better person for doing the job, the one who does it better is uh -huh. the gay man over the straight man, most companies, whether they have a policy or not, as long as they don't have anything, they're not doing anything that's really flat out discriminating against gays. They'll probably take the gay guy because the gay guy does the job better. Why? Because they're making the company more money. Yep. And and when it comes to business, it's more about being successful. I'm not going to say necessarily making money because there's a difference. <laughs> uh, and it depends on the company, obviously. Obviously, you want to make money. I mean, even the nonprofits want to make money because <laughs> nonprofit. if the nonprofits get a profit, then what they're going to do is they're going to just put that back into their organization. Ah, they, they're yeah. going to be able to do m more or hire more people to help with their work. So, and the profit people are going to be like, this is what we're in this business for. <laughs> so in any case, and it, because for successful, they want to make money so they can either do more or you know, get rich in the case of profit organizations. Yeah. So if there's a gay guy that can do it better than a straight guy, most of the time, not all the time, unfortunately, the gay guy is going to get it and vice versa. Maybe a gay guy is not as good as the straight guy. The straight guy is going to get it. It's going to be all about merit because it's about the money. And that's mm -hmm. really where, where most of the focus, I think, with business these days. This is not 100 percent true, unfortunately. <laughs> there, there's going to be other biases that are going to be thrown in. But, but yeah. So uh, any final thoughts regarding gays well, in the oh, place? I think we've kind of determined that. Yeah. It's at cool. least in our experience, as long as you're not doing anything that's like totally like everything's gay, even while you're at work, you're probably going to be just fine. It's and I, my opinion, when you go to work, you don't have to be out per se, but you're not going to be in the closet. If somebody asks, you answer them truthfully. Yeah. But it's not. But just kind of getting the idea that it's just not that big of a deal, because you know what? Really, when it comes to work, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I would have to say I think it depends on what your work is and how much social interaction you have for your work. Like for me, being here in Texas dynamically changed my interactions because I'm not at home in my own office of my own. You know what I mean? Like mm, where yeah. it's all chat and email and, and phone calls, being here around people, you know, hundreds of them, it you know, brings back the social dynamic of what it is that you do. And I guess that's all, the thing that really stood out to me was when I took the first trip, I didn't imagine when I came down here that I was going to meet gay coworkers. Now, I about that, but it was something that I took away. I was like, wow, like I had no idea that I was going to end up meeting, you know, people that I sort of have a connection with in, in, in different aspects. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of interesting. And given the scope of the jobs I've had over the years, there were some where I was absolutely closeted and quiet. 
and would never say a word and would speak in very generic terms so that I wouldn't have to um, kind of reveal certain aspects of things. Um, yeah. You know, I hear and, that. Yeah, I think if I was to be asked today, you know, what I did last night, I would probably keep it tempered. I wouldn't tell them that I went to three different gay clubs, you know, <laughs> and was drinking and, and this and that and dancing. Like, I, I don't I think that some people are very open about their lives and stuff. But there's a part of me that's like, no, I don't know if that's really necessary to get into the details. Yeah, I could see that, too. I mean, I. I when it comes to the details, I don't think it's that important because what's to me in my head, when I'm at work, I'm at work. You know, it's not my necessarily my social time. It's not what I'm there to do. I'm there to do the job and get it done and be go home, <laughs> you know. Um, but with some, you know, it's it's very social and very you know active and interactive and they want to know what people are doing, all that stuff. Me, I don't really care. <laughs> um, but. You know, like you said, I probably would if someone asked me specifically like what I did like last night, you know, I went to a I went to a Halloween party is what I would say. Now, if I mentioned, oh, it's a Halloween party at a gay partner's house um, uh, where a majority of the people there were gay. Um, it was a lot of fun. But other than that, nothing really major. You know, it wasn't the, the, the gay you know, it was just it was just a Halloween party that happened to have gay people there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, I do. I think it's kind of funny. So you're basically saying it was just a Halloween party that was hosted and had a bunch of gay people at it, as opposed yeah. to it was a fabulous party. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, yeah. Good deal. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a good time. And, and I, um, the one thing I did want to bring up, um, is the, what, um, Jeff kind of talked about was, you know, the whole, um, gay, um, like the guy, other people that you find interesting and attractive at work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know what happens. We all find, you know, we see those those guys at our at our work, and we're kind of like, oh, that your guy, you're cute. Yeah, I would totally. Um, there's one that I has been, I've worked with them most uh, most here, and um, I just he would he would totally be my type. Except I know he is, as far as I know, he is totally straight, unless something odd is going on, but. Um, it just, I would just, yeah, if, if I found out, I'd be like all over him, all <laughs> over him. Well, and that's not only if he's interested in you, though. Well, that's so, true. Yes, uh... I wouldn't be like, yeah, I wouldn't be all like, oh, my God. Oh. No, I mean, but I would I would like to know, you know, if he was and if he was, I'd be like, oh, cool. You know, hey, let's see about hanging out or. Oh, and, and think about my twins. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even if they were gay, maybe they're like the Twinkie Boys or something. Yeah, I mean it's their personal preferences, and and who, uh, maybe they're just both tops. I don't know, <laughs> and this, uh, which would totally ruin everything. But you know, <laughs> may, maybe one's a top, one's a bottom. Three way works perfectly. Both bottoms even better. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say that having been a trainer, one of the things I had to teach myself over the years was even if I had people that I, you know, were learners in, in the classroom environment and I was instructing them that I needed to keep myself in professional mode, no matter how distracting the person <laughs> may be um, because of their because of their, you know, their looks, you know, you find them attractive. I had to keep that in check because there was many a time where I was just like catching myself like. I need to not stare. I need to not, you know, <laughs> well, and, make, it, and, make it seem obvious. And that even works for, for non like the uh, subordinations, you know, where yeah. you're when it doesn't have anything to do. For example, me and Carlos, you know, I, 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 he's already made it, made sure that it was clear that he's straight. And I just made sure that clear that he knew that I was attracted to him. He's, <laughs> he's my type of guy. And we just got to, we just get this, this agreement. Like, yes, he knows that I know he's straight. It's never going to happen or anything, but we make jokes about it and things happen. Yeah. But that's more of uh, one is because it's the same level. I mean, yeah. if he, if, 
I mean, technically he was, he's a CSR three, I'm a CSR two, but honestly, there really isn't much different than that besides yeah. pay grade, <laughs> but, uh, anything like that, even if, if there was subordination and it really comes to down to how you interact with the people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if there was a subordination sort of thing where, you know, he was my supervisor, he wasn't just my coworker, he was a supervisor. Maybe it would change things of how we joke and, and act with each other. And the big thing was I made sure he understood that I was attracted to him, but I also made sure that he understood that I know you will not be attracted to me. And we'll just make jokes about it. Yeah, we know these these facts and just kind of making sure to maintain what's the right appropriate thing and making sure we stay within each other friendly guidelines. And uh, and the relationship was great because, you know, we're both like comic books. So we start talking about, you know, just comic books as, you know, two guys were talking about comic books. No big deal. Um, but occasionally these situations would come up. And the same thing with my other gay friends, even the lesbians. I made jokes with the lesbians all the time. I just kind of like quickly said something quietly to Deborah about something involving sex, which is totally not HR friendly. But I knew she was one of those people who says, says no, I'm just going to laugh at that. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. And, and doing that. But I did it at the appropriate volume when it comes to the workplace. Because the workplace, you have to be HR friendly. You're, you're not always going to be HR friendly. Don't get me wrong. But you have to be HR friendly. You know, it's like, I love you guys in an HR friendly sort of way. Um, so that's um, the case. And it's trying to find the happy medium along the way and how people react to things. So while Carlos was like, oh, you're gay. So what? I understand you're attracted to me, but at least you understand that I'm totally not going to be attracted to you because I'm straight. And we just have these points where it's where, you know, as I said, a lot of the times when I'm joking with them, it'll just me be looking at him and just smiling because something of uh, something he said and he's like, wait, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, both laugh and yeah. just move on. And while there are plenty of things where it's like, hey, if you want to swing this way, I'll totally help you out with that. But I'm not making the first move. I'm not touching it. I'm staying away. You're considered straight to me, if anything. Sing, 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 sing. All right. I think we've rubbed that to death. Let's move on. Uh, let's talk about last week's poll. Ha, <laughs> uh, Which, uh, due to some delay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was my bad. Uh, I think we recorded. Didn't we record it on Sunday? And I released it on, like, Friday? I think it was or Thursday. Something. Or, or something like that. <laughs> that was really late. I'm so sorry to you people. Uh, we were talking about favorite Halloween candy. Uh, the examples we gave were, were candy corn, marshmallow pumpkins, some uh, peanut butter taffy, and uh, Red Hots. Uh, nobody voted for the Red Hots at all. Uh, one person said the peanut butter taffy. One person said marshmallow pumpkins. Ooh. And we had three people say candy corn. Huh. We also had three other other entries, huh. uh, which included uh, peanut butter cups. So they were nice. keeping that generic. Snickers. Oh, I love Snickers. And Tootsie Rolls, which actually, I, I, I don't like Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> I like Tootsie Rolls as well. I actually like um, um, the flavored Tootsie Rolls that usually come around. I mean, they're around all the time, but like especially around Halloween. So yeah, the flavored, um, the flavored ones. Yeah, like the cherry and vanilla and and um, you know the fruit flavored ones. They're just they're just they're just good. It's almost like taffy, taffy, taffy. So anyway. Yeah, and I don't like chocolate taffy. Uh, but I like yeah, other flavors. I'm not a fan of taffy in general. Hmm. Sometimes, like if it's a fruity one, like a strawberry one or something, or raspberry or something, I might like it. But uh, I'm not much for the really chewy stuff. I'm more of just the regular candy bars and, and peanut butter cups, which oh, chocolate and peanut butter marriage. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, Gary, how about you? What is, what's your favorite candy for Halloween? Um, you know, I was thinking about this when we discussed the poll last week. And uh, if I was to get it, 
it, like if I went trick or treating or if like I went someplace and they have, I would be ecstatic to have zag nuts. Oh, zag nuts. Yeah, but but the thing is, is that they're not that popular, and I don't know if they come like in a mini bar of any sort for like Halloween. But uh, it's just it's kind of a throwback to my childhood. It was a candy bar that I didn't have very often, but I absolutely fell in love with. So every once in a blue moon, I'll I'll get just kind of this urge and i'll just go buy one because you know <laughs> well from the hershey's store you can buy an 18 count box for 1795 <laughs> does it only come in like one size that we know of? like just a standard candy bar this size? is a, this is a standard candy bar size I know, or at least the one that i found using google search now if i went like deeper in and you know who knows what i'll find but um well, this is from the Hershey's store, too, so they probably only sell them in those type of things. So. Exactly. Yeah, they only do this. Yeah, Hershey's store, Hershey's store dot com uh, has Zagnut 18 count box at 17.95 only. Uh, my peanut butter cups that I absolutely adore, they sell at uh, twenty dollars for a 32 count box. And that's of like the, the I, I think that's the two pack the two cup pack they sell yeah they do have a this is actually kind of cool by the way now that i've learned that the hershey's has a direct store <laughs> they, also, they also have things like uh, um baking chocolate uh they've got web exclusive things i think world's largest uh, reese's peanut butter cups you can get for 14.95 um some creamy reese's peanut butter so reese's must be owned by hershey's obviously there's the Hershey's so. round plastic filled dish. Uh, so there's so, a bunch of stuff. It's a boy. Uh, if anybody's getting uh, uh, a child, there's uh, it's a boy and it's a girl. Hershey's kisses hmm. thing. So that's kind of cute. Yeah. So if, if given that I'm thinking they may not have like a mini version, and it's not likely people are going to be giving out full size Zach nuts. Hmm. Um, then probably my next fallback is actually the pumpkin shaped Reese's peanut butter cup. Aha. Ha. Mm. And here's a little tidbit for all of our listening audience, including uh, the other hosts, if you're not aware. A uh, previous person that I dated had told me that they liked the like the pumpkins or the Easter eggs or the Christmas trees of the Reese's peanut butter cups. And I asked him why he said they're different. And I was like, really? So I actually researched it and I found out. Lo and behold, the reason why those are actually different is because they have more peanut butter than chocolate. Ah, so it's quantity. Because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, those type of things are, are – because they're larger, the chocolate is basically just a coating for the peanut butter. Correct. So let's – So if you like more peanut butter than chocolate, then you would buy the special varieties of peanut butter cups instead of the standard version. Which I never knew that until I we were dating, and then I had gone and bought I think the pumpkins or something, and I actually ended up looking it up I think online to find out like if there was any different ingredients or anything, and then I found out that the weight distribution that it's not the same ratio of peanut butter to chocolate that there's more peanut butter than there's chocolate, and I was like, well, that maybe explains why they're so popular. Huh. On a completely side note, you can get a <laughs> 25 pound case of Hershey's, Hershey's miniature chocolates uh, oh, assorted. For ninety five ninety nine from the wow. store. <laughs> That's a lot of chocolate. Even be those really those really small miniatures bars. Uh, now, if I could select that to do all of the special darks, uh, I'd probably be in heaven because I love love the special darks. But that's just me. Um, by the way. Um, quick uh, a thing if you want to do a special chocolate christmas present uh for somebody uh and i think i need to actually order some of these right now there's places so i used to live in Socrates, new york uh, actually it was for the first two and a half years of my life but there is a reason reason why this is special one um is since we moved after we moved away after we moved back to rochester uh with my family so it was two and a half when we moved to rochester for Christmas, and I think also Easter, 
our friends the Eskisons who lived in Socrates and um, would send us each year we would annually would send us a box of Krause's assorted chocolates. That's K R O U A U, excuse me, S E chocolates. And actually, uh, within like the last five or six years or longer even, uh, Krause has actually created, have a website where you can order their chocolates from their hand dipped, um, their hand dipped um, chocolates. And it, it's, Honestly, in my humble opinion, they are the best chocolates in all the world. You can get dark chocolate and milk chocolate brands, and you can get just sort of boxes and different types of stuff at Krauseschocolates.com. Hmm. And it is delicious. Um, and they've got all sorts of items that you can order from the website and they just ship it in this keep cool container and it's fantastic. And I think if you're looking for some sort of, uh, um, great chocolate and then I would order something from there and it's just delicious. Any case, moving on, uh, as my, um, uh, air conditioning starts turning back on this week's poll will be what's your favorite food for Thanksgiving so you come to a Thanksgiving meal and you have all this food laid out what we're looking for is which of those is your favorite is it the turkey is it the stuffing is it dressing there's a reason why we say that is it cranberry sauce mashed potatoes green bean casseroles your partner's ass <laughs> Or other. <laughs> we, will, we will always have the uh, our other. So we have our, uh, uh, and we do this all the time. Okay. Now, here's the one big thing to remember. We always put up the poll and we have certain answers that we provide. But then we have another category. So just right. because we, we have these suggestions doesn't mean you're limited to those. Okay. So, uh, pop. Pop over to CubsOutloud.com. This time I will make sure to get the, get this posted today so that we don't have to worry about it later. But in the meantime, let's uh, go and... Um so we'll start <laughs> off with... Um, start off with my Tumblr, which I uh, reblogged using the CubsOutloud.tumblr.com page. Um, there are three bears in a hot tub. And something tells me while they are not wearing any shirts, they're probably not wearing something else. <laughs> nice. So I ask, three bears in a hot tub, can I join? <laughs> yes. Um, and I think they're adorable, but that's just me. Yeah, they are very adorable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen? I love how it's called Budlandia Jizz Party. Um <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, mine is I titled Great View. Um, and it's oh not just my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just because of the I'm assuming ocean view there. There's a nice very Wait, nice. What what ocean view? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cause what you are seeing is a a the backside of a very bearish guy. I'm a, you know, construction worker, although, you know, you're not really getting, he doesn't have much clothes on, so I don't think he's working. Um, but he has his hard hat on. So. Yeah. And boots. And boots. Oh, yeah, and the boots. So, and he's the got, boots. so he's got two, he's got, you know, the safety aspect of things. He's got exactly. his head and his feet covered. Yes. At least wow. he's got that. That's, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. glad that's all he's got. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Just he's looking at some. He's looking at some blueprints. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wish there was a picture from the front. I it's, agree. You know, kind of. What? Well, yeah. I don't know. That butt looks good. <laughs> yeah, it does. Alrighty, Getty. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny because when we were going to do our picks, I completely forgot about it, that I had this one uh, as one of my likes. And so uh, I give unto our particular 
audience this week. Uh, I called it Bottom Bitch Writer <laughs> oh. because it doesn't it doesn't have a caption uh, per se. It has a what posted it underneath the picture put a question. It says, "Need a bottom bitch for the week's ride, sir." Inferring <laughs> that the truck driver that's in this photo. Uh, this very adorable pierced cub uh, needs someone to go riding with him in the big truck. Uh, so yeah, he's um he's got beautiful blue eyes and a goatee, short you know shaved hair, and he's furry. And I believe if I look closer at the picture, his right well in the picture the right nipple actually has a web ring piercing. Yeah. If you've ever it. seen one of those. Um, so I think it's the same on each one. Uh, they might be. And then he also notably has a PA and um, a cock ring and yeah. He's, anyways, so and he's sitting in the yeah. <laughs> so he's sitting in the truck uh, in the driver seat truck of a tractor or something. So yeah. Uh, so anybody who likes has a thing for truck drivers, you know, this cute cubby guy is probably right up their alley. Yes, tasty. Uh, moving on into the links. Hey, Damon. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is. I found. I forget where I found this, but I just randomly found it, and it's called Samesies, and it's just. Um, it's how heterosexuality came to be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a really funny video, and and you have to watch it. I, I don't. I don't want to get too much into it, but it, it is just. It's just perfect, and. Um, you know, and I will, I will say this, just, you know, just look out for the black guy. <laughs> okay. The video is, is funny. It's just, it's. And samesies. Yeah. Basically their, their run, their population is running out and they need to figure out a way to get more people and they figure it out. And yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's funny. It's cute. It's it's I like it. Yeah. So there you go. <sighs> All righty. Jeff. 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 You know, there's this mute thing that I need to undo. <laughs> <laughs> funny so, that. So uh, I don't know if. Uh, you guys know of this guy named Jeff Kanata. You might have known him from the Totally Rad show, which uh, was, which ended. I don't know if it was necessarily canceled or what happened, but it ended a few years back. And for a lot of their fans, it was sad. Well, Alex Albrecht went to do something. Uh, Dan Trachtenberg is now the uh, actual director of Why the Last Man, the movie. Um, which is in production right now, I believe. So he's gotten a big job. job. So they're basically, they kind of moved on their separate ways. But Jeff Kanata, well, he missed the days of uh, the Totally Rad show. And he put started up a Kickstarter for a new show. He didn't know what it was going to be called or what exactly everything was going to do, but it was going to be along the same lines of... Um, the Totally Rad show, but it was just primarily going to be him and he's going to probably have a whole bunch of different guests and stuff. Well, he funded. Uh, he overfunded by a lot. I think he was only asking for like $20,000 and he got over like $100,000. It was incredible. And I was so happy for him. And uh, I keep getting updates about the new episodes coming out. But he finally he had eventually found a name for the show, which he's calling newest, latest, best. And he has it on his YouTube channel, at least uh, Jeff Kanata, uh, YouTube dot com slash Jeff Kanata, I believe it is. That's uh, two N's, one feet, one T. Or just search newest, latest, best on uh, YouTube and you'll be able to find it. No problem. And uh, check it out. And just uh, the last one that was put up was his episode number seven, which is holiday special. He actually talks about Halloween candy. So very cool. Cool. uh, That's one of the things he also talks about uh, uh, American Horror Story Coven and uh, some the, the movie Counselor. So. Uh, I would say pop over and check it out and see what you think. I don't. I haven't had a chance to really watch much of it, so I don't know if it was as intriguing as um, as uh, uh, the Totally Rad Show was. But uh, I'm assuming we're probably going to get. Uh, obviously, you're going to get something different. But 
um, we're still going to get kind of get that vibe. I need to go back through the episodes and watch all seven of them to, to really kind of do a full review on it. But I thought it was interesting since I just got an update recently and thought I'd point everybody on its way. So if you like the games, the movies, um, the geeky sort of stuff, check out News Latest Best, uh, which hmm. is on YouTube right now. Uh, haven't gotten to with the company yet to make a full fledged podcast of it. But, I mean, hey, subscribe to YouTube and um, pop in there whenever you get a notification of the new new show going up and watch it in there. I mean, it's a video anyway, so might as well watch it on YouTube. Huh. So, newest, latest, best, uh, a new geeky semi-podcast-ish sort of thing. Cool. Huh. So, um, mine is sort of, uh, it, it wasn't something I planned, and it came up actually today. Uh, and I actually posted it on Facebook because it's that puts on a bear run and, you know, gets contracts set up with various, you know, vendors, including the host hotel. And I happen to be staying at a hotel right now, currently for work. Um, Marriott Corporation is sort of coming under fire. There's a, uh, the link that we're going to put is to, uh, if people feel inclined, they don't have to, is to a petition to ask Marriott to um, respond to and do something about the fact that there is a Marriott hotel, which I think is located in Kentucky, that is hosting a Oh, hello? Gary? Gary? <laughs> so, none of that was heard, huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's hosting Gary, just... a <laughs> and you blacked out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, the what it is is that uh, some people put together this petition. It's all, uh, on allout.org, and they're looking for fifty thousand signatures, which actually they're getting really close. But the thing is, petition of research and therapy of homosexuals, otherwise known as NARTH, is having a uh, conference at a Marriott hotel, which I think is in Kentucky, and people are like like basically calling to question corporate social responsibility. Mm. Like, why would you host such an event? And I personally signed the petition because if the petition is presented to them, it may not change the fact that they're hosting the conference, but it may make them become reflective as a company to think about how they host events and what that means, not only to their employees, but to their guests. And it's a touchy field because, uh, you know, because I put on a bear run, I can imagine that someone could possibly do the same thing. You know, on the flip side of it, someone who doesn't care for the gay community could turn around and, you know, petition yeah. that they that they not host leather events and bear events and, you know, and all these different kind of things. Um, but I don't know. I think this goes a little bit further because, like, leather events and bear events, in my opinion, are not about being harmful to individuals and, yeah. and has flat out said that gay cures quote unquote are, you know, really harmful to, to especially to young people. So, um, I don't know. I just, I just find it really kind of interesting. So I think it's a, it's food for thought. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So if people want to sign it, they can sign it. If they don't, that's okay too. Uh, I just think it's, it's interesting. And then I posted on Facebook and a couple of people immediately were like, you should go with Hilton or these other chains or whatever. And the thing for me is, is that I've been very supportive of Marriott for decades, uh, ever since when I was a kid and we went and did uh, conventions, my parents and I, for some organizations they were members of. And Marriott's always seemed to, you know, be the nicer ones that have their stuff together. So I was just really kind of surprised by it. And that's it. That's the end of the show. Please pop over to CubsOutLoud.com. Put in the poll. Tell us what your favorite food for Thanksgiving is. Uh, turkey, stuffing, dressing, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, creamy casserole, your partner's ass, or other. <laughs> so funny, you just kind of screamed that along there. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, shoot, you can shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Ask us a question. Ask uh, let us know what you think of the show. We like to. We love your feedback. You can also go to facebook.com slash Cubs Out Loud, twitter.com slash Cubs Out Loud, google.com slash plus Cubs Out Loud. Huh. Check that out. 
Uh, also, um, pop over to uh, Bear Underground. Join our group and post, 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 post. This is not just a place for us to post, hey, our show is up. This is also to have any discussions you want, and you want to, we may even bring it up on the show. Um, unless you know something saying, please don't bring it up in the show. <laughs> but use that as a, as kind of an inclusive community for all of those people who love Compass Out Loud as well as you. Um, we'd appreciate that. Also, pop over to iTunes. Leave us a review. We only have three. I mean, we've had several people give us five-star reviews, but you know what? I want an honest-to-God review, and I would love to see it. Just pop over to iTunes, leave us a review so that we can read it on the show for you. Also, pop over to uh, Stitcher Radio. Give us a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. You can find me anywhere on the web as Box Tech, Box Puppy, Box Cub, whatever. Also, find me on the Lockheed Journals and the Storm Redcast and uh, – um, I can't wait for that next episode. So I'm so excited because I'm doing, I'm essentially doing theater again. Yay! Uh, because uh, I, I mean, it's not like I can easily record my lines, and if I screw up, I can do it again. It. Yeah. <laughs> and I've recorded it. But um, uh, you, uh, honestly, uh, thank you, Adinas, for um, letting me join in the cast of uh, um, the Lockheed Journals. It's a wow themed thing so it's not probably not going to be for everybody but I find it kind of interesting uh, it just goes in this, the, the feed for the Storm Ride cast and, and while they have other shows like Flex Raid and um, uh, there's actually a, a podcast that they were doing regarding Game of Thrones on there too but it's just one big mega feed sort of thing but cool. look for the Lockheed Journals on there it's uh, awesome and I'm really excited I got the lines last night and I'm like oh my god your lines <laughs> and immediately I recorded them and Yay. and, <laughs> and uh, uh, Adidas after I said to you I'm not saying his real name it's just this uh, thing he goes by but uh, he, he sends it back. Wow, that was quick. I'm assuming all the rest of the people who record lines like take a week or two before they get to it. <laughs> it's like he sends it to me that night. I record it and then I send it back to him. And then... anyways, that's beside the point. So check me out there, Damon. Um, I'm anywhere, but well, not anywhere. Theater Cup Seven 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 Nine on Bear Four One, um, Bear Underground, and Tumblr. And I'm pretty much known anywhere that I choose to be found this way as GareBear73. And that's it uh, for, and of course, Eric and Robert hopefully will be back next week. Um, we'll be finding out what's uh, going on there, see if they finish their assignments. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get Robert back. Because uh, again, he was kidnapped. So uh, um, we're, we're hoping that we can get him back safely. I'm sure, though, he might be enjoying himself on the Appalachian Trail. Not the <laughs> Appalachian Trail, but the Appalachian Trail. <laughs> so, in the meantime, say good night, everybody! Uh, <laughs>